Hey, I did like most of the video for his Big Sur one. <laughs> no, cheers, uh. <laughs> cheers me. I see the world breaking and falling apart And I don't know what to do with it What to do with it I see hate building up all of the walls Turns family into enemy What do you do with it? Okay, so this video is obviously going up late as well. Um, I've been kind of in a funk lately after the holidays and um, that long trip up to Big Sur with our family. It's been a couple weeks now, but I feel like I'm still just trying to get into the rhythm of things. Posting schedule of these videos has been off, so I apologize for that. So this week, this last week, there was just a lot of work really. Um, a lot of heads down stuff, not much interesting to document. This weekend was kind of slow. Eric was working, so I was home. This last week also a ton of shit went down, right? Like there's been um, shootings, a lot of hate, a lot of, of um, conflict. And uh, I, uh, I guess I, as, as I think about design, um, I gave a talk a while um, last year called uh, Your Bias is Bullshit. And it was really just talking about, you know, understanding where you get your bias and making sure that you're making design decisions that are informed or from experience or from research. And, uh, you know, that's been something that I've challenged myself to do as a designer is trying to understand the decisions I make and how I approach problems and making sure I'm um, doing them responsibly. I think this is like a, an important sentiment too, just culturally um, and socially and how we act as humans is to like, to try and educate ourselves and understand and have perspectives that are, that come from a place of experience or from um, discussion or from research rather than kind of adopted perspectives or things that we see or, or read on the internet. I don't have any agenda or, or um, message that I'm trying to share. I guess for me, I'm very hesitant to, to post and, and have a perspective on things with a lot of these issues because I don't, I don't know how to respond. So the thing I wanted to do for this week is just talk to one of my good friends, Dee. Um, D Speech, she was a manager at Google when I was on Google Analytics. Um, she came down and visited this week, um, which is great to see her. And we had some discussions, and so I called her up and I said, hey, can we just talk and have a hangout and kind of record it for the vlog? And so uh, this is really just an honest conversation between the two of us. I thank you, D, so much for being open. And I just wanted to have an honest conversation with her and try and learn and understand more from her world and her context and how she sees these issues. And my intent was trying to learn. We're having a continuous conversation and it's been really life-giving for me. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. Once again, I'm not trying to make any huge agenda or calling one out. I think we collectively as a human race need to just, as a, and a country frankly, need to start learning to understand people better and reserve judgment. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully next week will be a regular uh, vlog. This was kind of serious, but it did, seemed kind of ridiculous to post some silly vlog when so much shit's going down. So. Enjoy the conversation, and thanks for sticking through it. So here's the deal. This last week, I had nothing to record that was interesting. Um, obviously, our country's gone through a ton of shit. We've talked about a ton of it, right? And um, in church today, we had what they call like a, a pastor's pause, where we like literally didn't talk about anything. We just like prayed and like lamented, right? And it was a time of just like, you know, just 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 reflecting on what's happened. Look, like if there's anything that I could like talk about this week, it'd be something relating to that. I don't want to make it like a polarizing what I think about anything, but rather I want to just be honest and ask questions to those that I know and love and whatever that's worth, like have that be some like 
some level of conversation and honesty, right? From not like the white dude's perspective. And I know that like most of my most of my community is white dudes. Um, and I feel like often we don't, me, I'll speak for me, like I don't know how to approach it. I love the people that I know. I want to, you know, approach the topic of racism, the topic of inequality, um, the topic of systematic bullshit, right, in our country. And I don't, I don't know how to have just honest conversations with my friends that I love that I know have different perspectives and come from a different place that I do. And like what you would recommend or how you would frame this scenario for like a dude like me. Just the simple fact that you wanted to have a hard conversation and that you asked like, can we talk about this is already light years beyond a lot of people. I right. mean, it's weird. It, this week has been weird for me because it's like, I feel like I live in two different worlds and it's just been hard. Like it's been hard looking at my own family, which is really diverse. It's been hard looking at my group of friends because to be honest with you, amongst the group of, I mean, we know a lot of the same people. I have never remotely experienced the things that some people have gone through this week, these last couple weeks, these last couple months, these years, like people have experienced in other places. So even I still feel a bit removed from it. And there's that weird vacillation. Just like being in an affluent part of California that's pretty diverse. It's a lot of things. It's, I live in Silicon Valley. I work for a tech company. I don't see a lot of people like me to begin with. My family is full of, you know, incredible, it's just full of diversity. I mean, my two sister-in-laws are both white, like white, white, like white European white. Um, I don't know of anything. My family portrait looks like a Benetton ad. I mean, I'm a mixed kid myself, you know, I'm Native American and African American. My kid is Native American, African American, Mexican, and some white European. So it's like, I don't, I don't know anything but crazy diversity and love, but having grown up though because of my dad's side of the family you know growing up down south we grew up in a predominantly like african-american life lifestyle neighborhood home i mean everybody knows i rap new orleans really hard and right. i saw people go through shit yeah it is just it's weird i think the thing that hit me heavy is knowing not even so much their reality even though that's affected knowing that like they're raising kids in a reality that's still the same shit that they've that's that has been in our past you know and like the weight that that carries as a parent like how do you one how do you like describe that to your kids and explain it nonetheless prepare them to be you know a balanced level-headed kid in that environment on the one hand i'm kind of glad my kid's young enough that I don't have to have that kind of conversation. Um, I can't imagine. It was so funny, like literally my husband was standing a couple of feet away from me in the kitchen tonight and he was making dinner and he said, I would never would have imagined we would have had to raise a kid and all this. I thought that this part, that part of history was history. And I'm like, it's not for a lot of people. It's still ongoing. The only things that have changed recently is that there's more cameras around, you know, the same systematic okay. shit's been happening and whatever. I mean, I, I'm saying things to people like, I would rather have a full on racist say to me, I don't like you or I hate you to my face rather than what feels like the last, I don't know how many decades have been alive, people keeping that shit on the inside and not right. saying anything about it. Yeah, I think the weird thing for me is that like, it's easy for I've listened to a couple podcasts of guys that have talked about this. Like, look, like you, like you don't even have a like, you don't have a position to speak from because like you're coming from a white privileged perspective, and not that it's like your fault. It's just like you don't have perspective to speak from, and so I'm always hesitant to like have a perspective. Even you do have perspective. You know why you have perspective because you are the symbolism embodiment of what we want to blame. You weren't there. You weren't enslaving people hundreds of years ago. You know what I mean? And yet you were the only thing in person that we could speak to. And I'm saying we as like black people can speak to and direct any kind of anger out. We can't do it to the system. 
because look what happens. So you have to shoulder a lot of that. And if and you wonder why I think a lot of white people are tired of the conversation, because I'm sure there's a lot of people just as tired as any black person is that this shit keeps coming up. And it's because they're tired of one, feeling probably like they're being blamed for something they weren't there and part of. Two, not knowing how to help the situation and rectify, even if they're the most well-intentioned soul on earth. And three, it's just, there's nothing you can say, I think. You don't even know how to approach a conversation with somebody without just letting them vent, I think. You gotta just let people get it out. So you're yeah. already kind of behind the curve but you have a perspective just like anybody else is like, I would rather have a conversation with you about shit like this than not and have to wonder what this shit is doing on the inside to like our friendship or our families. That's, that would be the worst. I guess what I'm saying is like, I don't have a perspective in the fact that like, I don't know what it, I can't say that like what you are thinking or what my buddy feels like when it gets pulled over is true or not. Like, cause I don't, I don't know. Like I don't have that perspective. Um, because I become from I come from a privileged like white Anglo-Saxon environment. If you look historically, from where where like white people have come from, it was so obvious that there were discrepancies. I think you know there were discrepancies in everything from education and whatnot, even now. But I think it's hard for people to reconcile when you see the sheer number of like black celebrities or famous people or people that are well off of a certain race because it might lead you to have this false impression that everything is okay and everything isn't okay even for those people. So I mean there's a lot of it can be go you know go back to media a lot of it can be I mean there's I wish people would figure out a way to, to notice the subtle things like there's a lot of subtle shit i've noticed in my life that to just gets to me that i don't think other people have had to live through easy example um when i was a kid if my mom said you know i said i want to go over to my friend jen's house and play and she'd be like she didn't remember who jenny was she'd be like Jenny who? And I say, oh, you know, Jenny that's in my art class or Jenny that lives in the big farmhouse down on, you know, Red Lane or something like that. I would never presume to say Jenny the white girl. And yet I started noticing when I was really young, if I were around my friends and their friends would say something or their friends would ask and their parents would ask and they describe someone or even the way their parents would describe someone. Oh, there's this guy, Jim at work. Oh, you know, Jim, the black guy. Like, why? Did that have to be the descriptor? Yeah. I guess it was one of my main motivations of like trying to document some of this conversation is that even like yesterday we went to go get ice cream in Irvine and we were the only white people, just a ton of Asians, right? And I go to Santa Ana, it's just a ton of Mexicans and you go to Newport, it's a bunch of white people and I feel like it's one of the things I miss about the Bay Area is that there's at least some yeah. mixture of culture and... And I think the, the the urge to surround yourself with like not even like minded like like looking people like continues this this you know binary living and not understanding other people and other races in and, 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 and honestly there's not that much difference but there's assumed differences because no one talks to each other and it's really it's really weird that we live in such a connected world but it's still so disconnected and not knowing, right? Like we don't really know each other. Yeah, the opposite is exhausting. I mean, I live in a community that's predominantly white. I moved down here from Oakland. And then even the move from from like New York to here or from down South to out here, I would happily go back up to the East Bay to Oakland and surround myself by people that look like me. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons I go back and forth home to New Orleans so much is to be able to see people that look like me and life can be exhausting integrating yourself into other things because you take on this thing of having to be the representative for your community. I mean, that right there already has so much bias well, baked into it. calling you, right? Right. It's right. a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, are you, how are you feeling though? Like, do you feel like you want to do something? Do you feel like you don't You don't know what to say? Like you want to say something to somebody? What's it like for you? For me, it, it all seems so ridiculous, right? Like I, cause it's, I like, I, 
I've been doing a lot of like research in the form of just like listening to conversations and trying to understand the situation. And I used to always be of the thing as like, well, I don't see color. Like I don't I, like, and I think that's like, I've come to the conclusion that's bullshit. Like, no, like I should see you as a beautiful black woman and I am an awesome white, like culture exists for a reason and we should respect and like rejoice in our culture because that's what brings like the seasoning to life. And I think that there's no reason to ignore it because no one is the same. Like to say we're all the same, just as like it could be male and female, like gay and straight, whatever. Like we should acknowledge the difference because it's good. It's what brings like it's what makes life interesting. But it's when it becomes like one's better or worse than the other. People start to attach meaning to those things that are are additional to the culture, which is where I think the issue becomes. And so for me, like where I'm at is like, I want to truly understand without, I feel, I feel like as a white guy, because we are token as like the privileged white kid now, like it's hard to ask and not feel like I'm being, you don't, you, you want to ask, but you also don't want to be offensive. You know what I mean? Like there's this vulnerability unless, I mean, there's trust here. So I can like talk to you. However, I don't feel like I'm going to offend you, but in real life, like there's that weird guys like, well, are you an African American or are you a black person? And I don't know, like, like they don't understand, right? And and there's no, there's no real like open forum to have those conversations, just to be people, and respect each other who they are. And so I'm in that place where like I've been, I have a lot of diverse friends, and it's not oh, like a weird thing for me. But everything that's happened recently, like, it makes me really want to dig into it and understand it more to like actually advocate for all people that aren't saying anything. And like explain it to my friends that aren't having these conversations. You know what I mean? You gotta, you gotta go person to person. Like, I'm in no way an advocate for or a representative of an entire community. I mean, shit, I'm split between two communities. Or just this, in the same way, I can't consider you, you know, the representative or evangelist or advocate for for like white males. The thing that would probably help though is. I mean, you know the friends that you can have the conversations with. You know the people that you might not, or it might take a bit more work. Like I said, the fact that you were like, let's talk, was huge to me. I mean, we've always been about real talk. Let's just have real talk. I've never shied away from people wanting to say like, tell me about, you know, where you come from. Tell me about your ethnic background. Tell me about, you know, the crazy stuff that you grew up with or the stories that you heard from your parents or you know what it was like growing up down south anything feel yeah. free to ask because it's i would rather you ask and know and have the knowledge than make any kind of assumption because it yeah. might be knowledge that would help in another situation you have when you do come across somebody else of a similar background you never know so given your context like being a design leader in a dominantly white industry aggressive like like hot industry like tech what are things that people like me, like just the prototypical white dude, can do that would help the issues that you see with race and culture? Like that's very broad, like feel free to take it wherever you see, but like what are like actual, actual, actual things aside from just like talking to people? Support those people and be honest um, if they're good, they're good. Probably one of the, I had one of the worst, most upsetting experiences where I was, became cognizant of my own skin color only a couple months ago. Actually, well, it wasn't that long ago. And I didn't know how to deal with it except to come home and be angry. Oddly enough, so, you know, I'm still working at Google, obviously. Google published a while back ago all those diversity numbers and they were basically saying yeah we need more you know African Americans Latinos and women in tech and those articles were great because I appreciated the company and its transparency but I made the mistake at the time of reading the comments on those articles and people saying oh so this means you know, Google's gonna get like lax in their hiring practices and bring in black people to fill out numbers. And for that moment, it made me question my whole career. And I said, am I as good as I think I am? 
am I here because secretly I am somebody's number? Like, it's fucked up. It took so much hard work to get here and to think of all the people I've ever worked with, I've been fair, I've been open, I've been honest, and to think, holy shit, a system possibly exists that was not that way for me, that was as not supportive of me as the people that I was working with or helping to like grow their careers. And I was absolutely destroyed. Like, I honestly had that largest moment of doubt that I've ever had in my entire life. Like, did I get here under my own merit or am I just some joke to somebody? Like, I don't even know if people know how that feels, like to have to question whether or not you're there. And it, it, like I said, it was bad enough because, I mean, I've been in this industry for so long. I've been out here in Silicon Valley since like 98 and I don't see people like me. I mean, I don't see a lot of women to begin with, but I damn sure don't see a lot of like brown women. So it's like, right, right. God damn y'all, you know, like really? So I didn't, I didn't know how to deal with that with that doubt and at the moment it would have just been so good for the people that were with me to be like you know what I know all this shit's going on right now people are questioning race or questioning whatever trust me when I say that you are here for a reason that you're good and comfort those people because trust me they're having those thoughts and it was just like something I only felt like I could complain about to like my people at home you know sure well, for whatever it's worth, you are badass, and and you wouldn't succeed at Google regardless because you know you have to quantify that shit and put it in a per <laughs> score. You, you counted those, <laughs> but I can't. I can't. I, I like. It breaks my heart, and I don't know what that feels like. I mean, I know what self doubt feels like, but at that level, like that's. It's unfair to someone to say that. Like, comments are the asshole of the internet. Like, we get that. But, like, still, like, that's not... That's just a context that, like, some people have to deal with, some people don't. And that's not fair. And that, like, that literally breaks my heart. Because I've worked with you, and I know that you're the best. And, like, it's shitty that someone can, like, pipe off something like that just in an aggregate comment. And not know the context. And I think Google is actually really trying to do that. Yeah. Right? Like, it's easy to say it from the outside. Um, I mean, you've been there. You know how hard it is to get into that place and the rigor behind um, how how we hire people. It's it's harsh. I mean, yeah. we're, we're even harder on ourselves now than we used to be. Just, just out of sheer volume, so... Yeah. Watch. I, I honestly want to keep the conversation going because, like, this is life giving for me just in trying to, like, understand people and culture. Like, it's, I think this is what life is about, you know? Dude, that's uh, why you're my people. This right here is why you're my people. <laughs> sure. For sure. Well, I love you. I love you and too. For your evening. Anytime. Like, and I mean that anytime. Real talk. Always. See you soon. Once again, you're badass. Have a good night. Thanks.